Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to create what I like to call the VCR or the slot machine transition. It's gonna look a little something like this. So, so as you can see right there, we have our first piece of footage and then it slowly speeds up start spinning and then it reveals our second piece of footage right like so. A pretty seamless transition and a really fun one to use. So let's get started. All we need to do is create ourselves a new sequence or work in a sequence that has already been created. We then need to, need to drag in our footage like so. So we're gonna drop that right here. And you'll notice that it's just a normal piece of footage at this current moment. So now we need to move to the place where we want to transition it. So let's move about here uh, that's let's say that we wanted to transition it here. We're then going to go into our effects. So go into our effects over here. We're going to search for offset, right like so. And then it's going to be in video effects, distort, and then offset down here. We can drag and drop that on. And then what we're going to have is the ability to actually create that motion that we want to. So we're going to go over to the toggle animation button with the little stopwatch right here in the shift center too. We're gonna to click on that and activate the animation. And now we're gonna move forward however long you wanna move this transition to go. If you like the pace of this one, it went from about four seconds to about six seconds. So it was about a two second long transition. So we could do the same. Let's move it forward about two seconds. You can see that we start at almost the exact same space at about, uh, if we jump to it, it's about 13, 19, so we can go to 15, 19 right here. And you can actually click on this and make it easy to jump to like so. And then we can move it maybe just a little bit. That's just to give it a little wiggle room on each side. So we're gonna move up to 16 seconds, right around two and a half seconds. Then what we wanna do is we want to spin this in either direction and, and have it rest back at the sort of the appropriate place. So we can do this by eye, if we just look at it right like so. And it's actually pretty easy to get this to lock on and to have it fulfilled. So now we can see this right here. Maybe a little bit slow, so we can actually sort of maybe make it go a little bit farther, a couple more iterations over this time period, get it lined back up, drop it. And that looks good. It's not going to look as good as the first one until we add some stuff later, but that's a good animation sort of speed that we want. You can also do this side mathematically. The uh, This is 1080p footage, which means that it's 1080p across, or it's 1920 across and 1080p tall, which means you can take the beginning value and add 1080p every single time to um, create a, to basically mathematically create it. So for example, if we jump back here and this is 540, so we saved it at 9180. And you'll notice that if we go back to our, uh, if we actually open up a calculator right here and do 540 plus 1080, you'll notice that the first iteration, that's where you'll find the first um, revolution, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You'll notice 9180, 9180, right like so. And like I said, that's just because what we're doing is we're offsetting it by that many pixels. So since it's 1080p pixels tall, every time we offset this by 1080p, it's going to make it one full offset. So as long as you hit any of these numbers and it always starts at 540 or at least for 1080p comps, all you have to do is add the height in. And every time that's one revolution, that's two revolutions. You can make it exact so you don't have a pixel on the top or bottom. Little quick tip there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to go in and grab our next piece of footage. So we have the default transition working right here. And now we need to add in the second piece. So we're gonna grab this one, drag it on over. And then you'll see that right at the very end here, we're gonna go to the, the last bit. So right, just a little bit farther over right here. That last one is what we want. So where it stops is this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it to the point right before this new frame starts to come into view. We're then going to drag this piece of footage to match that. So right here, I'm gonna drag this piece of footage to match that. Now, on our next scene, oops, let's make sure that we get the right piece of footage right here, the secondary one, yep. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is with this secondary piece of footage, we're actually going to drag it up so that it aligns itself with this edge. We're then going to toggle the animation. And now we're gonna move frame by frame and we're going to make sure that this sticks to that line as close as possible. We're gonna add some blur to this later so you don't have to be exact. Just get it pretty close so that it has the same amount of motion, right like so. So we're gonna drag it down, get it pretty close, move to the next one, get it pretty close. 
move to the next one, get it pretty, and then just basically bring it into full frame. Now, what we're gonna do is whenever we go through this, you'll notice that we have, it looks like that this one finishes off the transition. What we want is to make this a little bit more realistic. So we're gonna go to the point where it ends right here. We're then going to click on this first piece of footage and you'll notice that we have the shift to center on the offset. We're gonna highlight these keyframes, right click and hit copy, or you can hit control C. We're then going to go to the top piece of footage and right where we're at, we're going to hit control V or paste. So we're going to, well, first off, actually we need the offset effect. So let's go into uh, the effects and go to offset, drag that on there. That's why the paste didn't do anything. Now we're going to paste. So you'll see that when we click control V, it actually pastes it right where we're at and it does that exact transition that we had over here. The reason this is important is because it keeps the speed consistent. So now it looks like it's doing the exact same um, transition as this one over here. So now that we have both of these lined up, so that now it has this, this sort of transition going right here, starts, ends. Now what we can do is we can actually add it and make it look pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move to this one right here where it starts to come down and where the offset begins, which is right here. We can drop this down and actually zoom this in. And when we drop it down, we have velocity. What we're gonna do is we want to take the velocity of this. So if we click on one of the keyframes, it'll show up. And we want it to start off fast and then get really slow. So if we click on the back end over here and drag it down, it'll do just that. And we can also expand it to make it a little bit more extreme. And basically what we're doing is we're creating this curve. We can bring this one in as well to sort of put it flush with the other one. And now what we have is an extremely fast intro and then it slows down for the end. And now we're gonna do the exact reverse of that onto this piece of footage. So we're gonna go and click on the bottom one. We're gonna drop this down. We're gonna zoom in this so that we can see it. And if you can't see it very well, you can always expand this out a little bit. We'll click on a keyframe and do the exact opposite. We want it to start slow and go fast. So we're gonna drag this one down, drag it out, click on this one and bring it so it goes together over here. And you want the velocities sort of next to each other. So this one's at 54,000, this one's at, uh, what was it? I think roughly 44,000 is where it ended up over here. We're actually 53 right there. So we're actually pretty close on the velocities. And now you'll notice that whenever it starts, it speeds up on this side to faster and faster and faster. And then it's, sort of slows down. It makes it look like it's one fluid transition. Next thing we're gonna do, and the final thing we're gonna do is just add a little bit of blur on this. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna search for a directional blur. So we're just gonna go directional, search for directional blur, drag and drop it right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right where it starts. So we're going to click on the blur, go blur length, and then move forward until we get to this point and then extend the blur up to maybe like uh, 111. Then we're going to take that transition. We're gonna do the exact opposite on this side. We're going to start it off at 111. So we're gonna drag the directional blur here. Now, important is we don't start this one at zero. We start it at 111. Make sure it's the exact same as this one so that again, we're meshing them together with the same qualities. Then we're just gonna to go to the very end over here and make it zero. So right about here, make it zero. And now we have our neat little transition. So it goes faster and faster and then it rolls on over into the next one. And you'll notice that this actually came out to a four second long transition uh, because we actually had to double the speed. So if you wanted to make it the same speed as the first one, what you can do is make that a one second beginning and a one second end, right like so. So that is how you do it. All you have to do is basically just create the transition on one side and then duplicate it to the other side and you have this sort of fluid transition all together. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.